when you hold me Love me and touch me and tell me that you need it You my dog and I'm with you for a reason Keep it real, if it's anything you need I be jumping in my car, get no fuck about the speed I'ma do it all I can just to show you that I got ya Sing to you like an opera, babe What's up, Ham Fam? It's your girl Desi, and I'm back with another video. As you see by the title, this is a video to do with our basic training. I'll try to give you some things that are very helpful to know, some things that some people told me, and some things that people didn't tell me about. Um, I'm not going to talk to y'all too long. I'm going to just go straight into the video. So go ahead and smash that like button, comment down below, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you're part of the DC gang, what's up? Without further ado, let's get into the video. So, first things first, when it comes to basic training, there are three phases. It's red, white, and blue phase, right? So, when you first get there, you'll be in red phase. Second phase, after being there for about three weeks, you'll go into white phase. And then three weeks after that, you'll go into blue phase. And then the last week, you'll be in red, white, and blue phase, which is just you getting ready for graduation. You guys have passed the board, the last week, you passed all that. But for starters, we'll get into the joining part. So to get into the Army, you have to have like a minimum ASVAB score of about 31 or 32. Um, what really counts is like your GT score when they break it down, it, it's really like your GT score. If you have like a 110 or something like that, you pretty much got a good selection of jobs. Um, after you pass the ASVAB, then they'll see what all jobs are open for you if you decide to pick a job and you decide to go about the process, then you will have a heightened weight a drug test, a physical, and all of that. Um, there are different height and weight standards based on age, height, um, and, and sex. So keep that in mind. Um, that was my hardest part about joining the Army was honestly the height and weight because I passed the ASVAB with no problems. Um, so once you get past MEPS, you finally get your contract you sign your contract and you're on your way i went from montgomery alabama to fort jackson which is like five hours so they just took us in a van there on the way we stopped to get gas and snacks and then we made another stop to get food from um golden corral they pay for your food of course not your snacks but your food and then when you finally get there you're not getting a shark attack. I didn't get a shark attack. Um, I got there like 10 o'clock and we didn't get a shark attack. Um, it was a reception, not actual like your basic training. Like, So yeah, you go to 120th, that's your uh, reception. You don't really do much. You don't, um, yeah, you don't really do much. You get your issue gear, like your uniforms, your PTs and stuff, you get your boots. Um, yeah, get your boots, your uniform. You figure out like who's going to be in the same company as you. They'll give you like little colored dots. And if that other person has the same dot as you, then yeah, you're going to the same. Also, um, they break you down into companies. While you're in reception, you also figure out your graduation date. So if you're lucky enough to still have your phone, go ahead and tell your parents your supposed to be graduation date. That date can easily change if you get an article 15, um, if you fail a PT test, don't complete the forge, anything like that, like that can, that can easily change. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you finally get to your actual basic training, uh, unit, then you will actually get your shark attack. Which it's just a lot of exercising. Um, you have to run back and forth doing unnecessary things and then you unload all of your gear. They make sure that you have everything you're supposed to have. And then you turn around, pack it all back up, run to your bedroom. They're going to assign you a bed and a locker. You guys have to put your locker together quickly and neatly. Um, that same night, you'll get to take a shower, but it won't be like reception. In reception, they don't time you. You don't really, really see drill sergeants after like that day versus in 
basic like we we got told to take three minutes out if it wasn't out in three minutes then everybody on the outside is just getting smoked while waiting on you so keep that in mind um after that uh first per day we started like learning our basic army skills your left face right face about face your marching your your um learning how to salute learning your um your customs and courtesies, things like that, knowing when to go to parade rest, when to stand out of attention, when to say yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sergeant, no sergeant, yes drill sergeant, because you will not refer to any drill sergeant as a sergeant when you are in basic training, they will be referred to nothing but drill sergeant. Um, that's pretty much all red phases, learning your customs, courtesy, leadership, um, basic army skills, uh, things like that and also conditioning yourself physically so there will be a lot of smoke sessions of course because a lot of people aren't going to like snap into that discipline like they need to so keep that in mind then once you finish red phase it seems to start getting a little easier you'll get a, a flag change so instead of having red flags you'll have white flags that's when you'll start attending the range starting to uh zero your weapon qualify march with your weapon um salute with your weapon everything that you have to do you have to start doing with your weapon like even when you get in smoke you smoke you get in smoke with your weapon the v up you still gonna have your weapon your push up you still gonna have your weapon so yeah everything everything with the weapon you don't even the only time you leave your weapon is you leave it to go into the latrine and you have to leave it with your bump buddy or whatever the case is your battle buddy somebody has to have it in their possession and then when you go to sleep you hang it on your bump um other than that that's like all wife it is it's just qualify 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 go to the range go to the range go to the range that is all white phase really is um at the end of each phase you have like a culminated training event um it's a field exercise so red phase you'll ruck march i forgot how many miles i think it's like six or something but it's not as far as it seems but that'll be your first ruck march so you'll ruck march that time and then um that'll be your heaviest ruck too but you'll ruck march that day uh that'll be two days and one night and then the end of white phase you'll do three days and two nights which uh is called the anvil so you can probably like search and see what all it entails because i'm not going to go too in depth because then that video will be really long but you can just search the anvil the after red phase it is the hammer after white phase is the anvil now after the anvil you'll go into blue phase blue phase is a crucial phase because like when you first come in, you'll have a PT test. It's called a diagnostic PT test. And then you'll have a red phase PT test. If you pass that good job on you, you're still gonna take white and blue phase. If you fail it, okay, you need to see what you need to work on. White phase rolls around, same thing. But if you fail white phase by a lot, it's up to your drill sergeant's discretion that they can they can recommend you to go to FTC, which is a fitness training camp. They can also um, think about recycling you. Um, when it comes to blue phase, if you don't pass blue phases, PT test is like FT FTC or recycle. You're going to get another chance to take your PT test. Keep that in mind. But trust me, you don't want to have to retake it. You do not want to retake that PT test after the fourth. You're going to be so tired. So keep that in mind. Um, but yes, you'll, in blue phase, you'll take a PT test. You will take... Um, a, a test about everything you learn about reading a map about um land nav about um what else did it was it on um we had it about like okay so we had care on the fire um tactical field care okay you, you'll know i'm not finna rack my brain it, but just know it's not set up for you to fail it is really for you to pass so after you do all of that just know that you're pretty good um 
but before you do that last blue face test they'll have you do the forge the forge is the most crucial field exercise it is four days and three nights every night you're outside you don't have a tent none of that you're gonna dig a hole and you're gonna lay your hole and that's if you're lucky because we just laid on the ground we didn't dig a hole because we were so tired you just you just like forget it so keep that in mind um you're gonna be exhausted because you cannot go to sleep that whole first day at all uh, and then they wake you up with freaking smoke bomb telling you to hurry up like the forge is very mentally tiring um you're ruck marching every single night that you're there every single night you're ruck marching um through the day you're doing activities like we had combatives two rules uh that was pretty fun like the day activities are pretty fun but the nights the nights are rough like when we had the um y'all hear a lot of stories about it like you have to crawl through a football field of freaking sand and it is miserable it's tiring because i did not know the, the thing i did not know about it like you know you gotta crawl through sand right everybody knows that right how many of y'all know that y'all got to do a whole obstacle course? Climbing over walls and running and going up on the barbed wire before. Because ain't nobody tell me. <laughs> ain't nobody tell me. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell y'all. Because they had me set up like, what the? What the? Like, okay. But, yeah. It's a whole obstacle course before you even get to the crawl. And then you got to crawl through all that sand on the barbed wire. And you think they be like, okay, so when they do a flare up in the air and then you don't move. That's not enough rest. I'm over here like, bro, I'm about to die. I can't breathe. You got this IOTV on and you talking about some freaking crawl this far. After I've been ruck marching for two days. Mm-mm. They should have prepared me for it because <laughs> I was not for it. <laughs> Anyways, after that, um, also I want to add, I injured myself in basic. I fractured both of my hips in basic. So I was like struggling with everything at that point. Um, <sighs> also, nobody informed me that we were going to do rough marches. Mm -mm. I didn't know what a ruck march was. I didn't know what a rucksack was. But just so you know, it's an extra large book bag that can fit basically all your freaking gear in it. So that lets you know how much shit you finna carry. Tip, when you when you pack your rucksack, put your like shoulder plates upside down. Like you're gonna have to sit it right side up for them to like look at it and the US Army will be facing out. So Flip it upside down to where it's facing up. The U.S. Army is facing you upside down. Sit on it and pull the uh, straps so all of your weight will sit right here instead of on your hips. It helps so much in a rough. Um, like for real, it helps so much. Uh, what else? If you're uh, like, if you're like someone that struggles with like running really fast or walking really fast especially with weights start in the front it really helps so that you don't fall very fall very far behind um what else that's one okay so um after that final ruck march which is the four days and three nights i want to add that pretty much the only mandatory things you have to do is that very first 24 hours you need to complete the entire first ruck march the entire first ruck march and then you need to do the nick which is the night infantry course which is the crawling through the dirt um those are mandatory you have to complete those if you just if you happen to get like injured the second or third day do not be like oh my god now i'm finna fail no i don't want to go to sick call even though i've broken my hip something like that don't do that so just just know it's not mandatory, okay? Also, blue phase PT test. 
that'll come before the fours, but I just want to give you a tip that do not stress yourself. Make sure that you can try your best to get a 60 or above because the AIT it is required. Um, they're coming out with this new ACLT, so I don't know how it'll be for um, the new soldiers coming in. But I just want to make sure that you know, like, for those of you who are doing a regular PT test, they say 60 is required. If you don't get a 60, you will have to retake that PT test. But if you get a 50, then you will be okay. Um, you'll be able to graduate. Um, you'll get a phone call at the end of each phase. Not saying it's gonna be long, but you'll get a phone call at, at the end of each phase as long as you guys aren't like misbehaving. Um, Red Face has a lot of like classes to teach you a lot of things. Don't fall asleep or else you'll get in trouble. Um, so yeah, basic is really mental, not so much as physical. Um, it gets you physically fit, but it's not as terrifying as people make it out to be because I had the worst expect expectations of basic training. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get off this bus and everybody's going to be yelling at me and teaming up on me. And I was like, I'm not going to make it. But I promise you, throughout the whole basic, all I kept in my head was I can't get recycled. I have a baby to go home to. I have a family to go home to. I can't leave my baby for three months and then turn around and tell her, oh, I have to be gone longer because mommy didn't do what she was supposed to do. So remember your why. If you can remember your why, you won't have no problems at all because it's just mentally mentally challenging. Um, For those of you who are getting ready to go to basic, um, holiday block leave starts December 20th. So if you're in basic, just know that you will be going home if you so choose. That's the thing. If you so choose. If you decide that you don't want to go home during basic, that's fine too. You can stay at basic training. I personally was like, huh, I'm out. I I got to go. So I heard me up and pack my bags. And I was like, see you in two weeks. So the only disadvantage to it is that when you come back, like you got to try to stay in shape. Um, like when we came back, we got put back in red phase, but it is what it is. It's temporary. Um, but I love basic. It was really fun. I made a lot of battle buddies specifically. I mean, like I had Fisher is my bestie, like basic, the AIT. That's my bitch. <laughs> and then I was with my sister the whole way through uh, until we got actually stationed at a duty station we got separated so far but it's okay we'll meet back up the army is a small the army is a small little place okay but honestly you guys don't don't be scared to go to basic training it is it's not as bad as everybody makes it seems and sometimes you're gonna be like oh my god i can't do it i want to give up it's gonna be times that you see like your battle buddy sitting there and you're like, come on, it's okay. You have to support your battles. Even though sometimes you don't really click with them, you like, I don't know her. But I promise you, you guys got to, you got to support each other because you will sit there and you'll be like, this is not for me. You got to move past it. I promise you, you can move past it. But just, just know there's going to be times where it seems like it's hard, but it's going to get easy. Um... So yeah, my key points are the four is a four day, three night thing. You have to complete the first night. There is a blue phase PT test. You have to make at least a 50 in order to get out. Um, make sure that you're trying your best in PT. Um, if you hurt yourself, make sure you go to sick call before it gets too bad. Me personally, I started feeling pain in my hip after about being in basic for like maybe a month. Uh, might be less and then we went on holiday block leave after I had actually injured myself like I was literally limping so bad and I went on holiday block leave I never went to the doctor 
and then I came back, still didn't go for like two weeks. And then my drill sergeant was like, no, you need to go to sick call because you're walking like the walking dead. And I went and I was at a grade four stress fracture. So don't push it off. Um, you're going to qualify with your weapon, even though you'll be like, oh, I've never shot. Oh, you're going to shoot so much. You're going to qualify. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So next video will be an uh, in-depth about my AIT. So go ahead and smash the like button, comment down below, hit the subscribe button. I wait on that one though. Cause I'm trying to hit 50 subscribers. No, I'm lying. We already hit our 50 subscribers. We have 53 subscribers. Oh, yay. I salute y'all because see y'all loyal y'all be watching our videos and I appreciate it let's hurry up and get to 100 because after we get to about 100 it's either going to be a giveaway at 100 or 150 so stay tuned and it's going to be a good one it's probably going to be like some Uggs or something but yeah um like I said smash the like button comment down below hit the subscribe button join the DC gang and I'll be back with another video real soon Cause it's the hand of fan. It's the hand. When you hold me, love me and touch me and tell me that you need it. You my dog and I'm with you for a reason. Keep it real if it's anything you need. I be jumping in my car, get no fuck about the speed. I'ma do it all I can just to show you that I got you. Sing to you like an opera.